Hello, my name is Jake Ferris, and today I'm going to be discussing Andy Dillard's work, Living Like Weasels. Now, in this piece, I'm going to be approaching exactly how it is that Annie Dillard references deeper human nature via her discussion descriptions of nature itself. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to reason that she does this through complex images and the diction with which she describes those images and the contrast that she creates in those images between human nature and just organic wild nature. I'm going to say that through this contrast she can explore deeper ideas about human nature and how we can improve ourselves as humans. The first piece of evidence that I have in, uh, that I have in support of this is a quote where she talks about the lake that she spends most of the, uh, of the essay in, or near rather. It covers two acres of water and 6,000 lily pads. There is a 55 mile per hour highway at one end of the pond and a nesting pair of wood ducks at the other. Right away, she's drawing a comparison with these images. She has two acres of water and a 55 mile per hour highway. Two acres of water is one, a human measurement, and two, very precise, in the same way that a highway is a human idea and is a, it's an expression of the ability for humans to make complex choices and um, it was also very exact, 55 miles per hour. This is contrasted by 6,000 lily pads. Of course, she didn't actually count 6,000 lily pads. That's ridiculous. And then the lily pads are also not a scientific measurement. Um, and then she also mentions a pair of wood decks, wood, wood, wood ducks, which are not human. And uh, she doesn't even mention a number. She just says a pair, which is, uh, you know, non-scientific. And even though it is clear that there's only two of them, she doesn't mention exacts. exacts. With this contrast, we see that Annie Dillard is painting an, an idea of human nature as loud and noisy, and ultimately kind of superficial. Acres is an arbitrary measurement. 55 miles per hour is also arbitrary. It, could, it might be 120 blem farks per hour. It doesn't matter. It's all, a, it's all a choice. Whereas there are lily pads. There are ducks. These are things, and they're very beautiful, very natural things. And unlike the highway, which is loud and noisy and disgusting, mostly, um, that's the connotation that I would have anyways, uh, the ducks and the nature is pretty and nice and natural. Already this contrast is painting an idea of how humanity um, has a more superficial but more complex sort of layer to it. Uh, this is compounded by the next quote I have, which is, under every bush is a muskrat hole or a beer can. The far end is an alternating series of fields and woods, fields and woods threaded everywhere with motorcycle tracks in whose bare clay wild turtle eggs, uh, wild turtles lay eggs. Here again, she's drawing two comparisons, beer cans and motorcycle tracks versus uh, turtle eggs and muskrat holes. Motorcycle tracks, or motorcycles in general, and beer drinking is is recreational it's rather it doesn't have really any sort of deep deeper uh, motive to it other than just relaxing it's not a necessity and it's just a superficial choice that people can make whereas continuing your species by laying eggs and continuing your species by surviving in a hole or building a hole that is wholesome um and this is again shown in how just random beer cans laying around is kind of gross and, and gnarly. Nobody wants to see that. And motorcycle tracks and motorcycles themselves being loud is kind of is kind of annoying and obnoxious and dumb. Um, that image versus the image of nature, which is, you know, while well, turtle eggs, a very, very, very interesting occasion to see, especially when they're hatching. Um, and muskrat holes, which are, you know, interesting. It's, it's an animal's place of residence. It's much more interesting and it's much more natural, much more beautiful than seeing a beer can at least. Again, she's painting the idea of um, human complex, human complexity of choices um, being far different than, uh, than the natural world and her descriptions of the natural world and how those two interact. Again, supporting the thesis that through these two images, she explores a deeper, na uh, deeper human nature and how it is more complex and ultimately more noisy and disgusting because of its complexity versus the more simplistic nature, uh, nature of nature itself. I've got one final quote to support this idea. Um, in this quote, she makes uh, a reference to earlier in this, where she, where there's a weasel, that um, where weasels are talked about how 
they grab on something and never let go. They'll grab onto a hunter's arm and then they need to be soaked off like a stubborn label. Or how they'll latch onto a, a hawk's throat and then even when they die their skull is still attached to that hawk. because Or that eagle rather because they are so fixed on the necessities of life. Um, and she says, I think it would be well and proper and obedient and pure to grasp your one necessity and not let it go. Here, she definitely references the images of a weasel grasping onto something and not letting it go. And she says that that idea of that necessity, of that simplicity, is a good thing. And this is in direct um, contrast to the other ideas where beer cans, highways, and uh, motorcycles are non-necessities. You do not need them to survive. And so she's saying with this image of the weasel and how, um, how good it is and how pure it is and how, and how uh, well it is to grasp onto one something and not even let it go, not even in death, she's saying how well that is compared to the human nature, which she's obviously talking about indirectly. Sorry, I thought I had to sneeze for a moment. That was unprofessional. Um, there are some alternate interpretations of this of this uh, piece. The first interpretation that is opposed to mine that I have found is that it's the idea that humans have gone and messed everything up by their complex choices. And now, I don't think this is necessarily incorrect. I just think that this interpretation is a little bit weak. Because while I agree that it shows that humans have messed things up by creating these loud highways these beer cans, these motorcycle tracks. Um, I think what it's really trying to say is that these choices create an ugly lifestyle and that if we lived more as the weasel, motivated by necessity, uh, then we would be well off and we'd be more clean or, or rather more obedient and proper and pure than if we were to live as we currently do. So I think that the interpretation just has the wrong idea even though it uses the right evidence. The wrong idea being just that humans mess things up, and if we live more like nature, everything would be better. It's more of, it's more, it's less about nature, and it's more about how it'd be better for humanity to live like this. It, it'd be a, a better way of living. Um, and the next interpretation is that of uh, the whole story being pretty much a metaphor for human uh, human nature's primal desires of the carnal sort. Um, th things like the like the weasel emerging from the rose bush being described as kind of uh, full of sinuous muscle, am I right? Uh, many would interpret that to be sort of a symbol of uh, of the phallus. And now, this interpretation isn't incorrect. And in fact, I would actually argue that it even backs up my current interpretation uh, of the text in that the way that Dillard um, describes the uh, the the great experience of that of that weasel and of that to some more sexual moment um, it enhances the idea that that Dillard um, that Dillard wants to talk about the contrast of a more simplistic lifestyle where you're just motivated by the continuation of your species or the continuation of yourself such as you would as such as in a more carnal primal sort of way versus uh, the more superficial sort of uh, highways, motorcycles, and beer drinking. So the idea of this primal desire, it works well with the idea that a, a more simplistic lifestyle is better um, because they're both held in rev reverence by the author. Both, both occasions. Both ideas. Um, now the implications of all this uh, of, of all this idea of the contrast of human sort of clutter and filth based off of choices and complexity versus natural simplistic necessity being good and pure, the implication of that is that by these contrasting images, we can better see what is wrong with our societies or what we can improve upon in our societies to live more better, more whole, more proper, and more obedient lives, as she says in her own essay. Through these contrasts, we can we can improve upon ourselves and we can see what is wrong. Um, and that just about concludes my talk about uh, Annie Dillard's Living Like Weasels. Let's see, wow.